Hey guys, StarCraft here, and all right, don't worry, I'll start growing the beard back. I haven't started trimming. It's already starting to get all over up and everything, so don't worry, folks. This isn't permanent. I just want to give it a try. That and C2E2 is coming up, so maybe I might trim it off one more time just so I can <laughs> do the Joker for um, for the convention. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But once again, you guys, at least some of you guys wanted it, so we'll be doing so I'm doing the next part of our Angel Batman Elseworlds. Is again, I'm doing all four of them, and that's Batman Brotherhood of the Bat. The, and as well as its follow-up, because if it has a follow-up, I will be doing them at the same time. The two-part Legend of the Batman, Legend of Batman, or League of Bat Batman, as well as going over the Night Gallery. Now, what is this? Well, back after Nightfall, when they were working on Prodigal and um, before Prodigal ended, they were trying to think about some new designs for Batman. Uh, eventually, they would settle on one. I believe that was the one that had the pointy um, shoulders and still ha and it was all jet black. But during that time, they legitimately came up with some different designs, most of which are in the night gallery, which after they decided, you know, let's, you know, if they did all the designs, some of them were radically different, others of them, eh, not that much different. It was then decided thanks to, the, um, was it? Um, thanks to, yeah, Doug Mulwick too. Hey, why don't we make a story out of this where all of these concepts are... Batman actually did come up with some of these, but toss them aside and someone decides to use them. And thus, that's where we get this. Now, in the Night Gallery, this is actually treated as if... Well, um... As if Bruce was writing all this. And some of those details are seen in here, but this one goes even further. Um... Like the first attempt, um... Between utilitarian and symbolism emphasizes speed and economy that's just for this one alone and um then you, ha you know, again you just have all these different outfits again some of which do show up in the book some don't probably because they're so radically different like you have this all red one um mysterio and mysterioso look good for entrance but then what even if frightened, many criminals will fight in desperation or panic. Can't get tangled up in devices or in of intimidation. Drop the shoulder hooks. <laughs> Again, it's like how he's actually going through it all. Even when he gets to this one that would be a regular throughout all of this, he says, certainly scary, but too demonic. Goal is to oppose evil on its own terms. Fight on its own turf. Invade hell, but not transcend or outdo it. This might even frighten me. And then they even have stuff for Robin, including this one I can definitely tell you is Neil Adams' artwork. Say what you will about the band recently. You have different different designs, which this one looks like the Red Robin design, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, the New 52 Red Robin design. And um, stuff with the Batmobile, etc., etc. You know, with the Batcave. This was a nice little bonus feature to get everything going. Now... This also would have multiple artists involved. You would have, um, and Jim Apero, Jim Ballin, Brett and Blevins, Norm Brayfogle, Vince Gar and Garano, Tom Grummet, Mike Manley, Graham Nolan, and Jose Rubenstein. Some of which are no longer with us. And as you can see, I actually had Norm Brayfogle sign it years ago before he passed away. As well as Tom Grummet and, um, and... Jim Ballon. Just a moment. I'm back. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, like I said, I also had Jim Ballon do the artwork. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of Batman, each based off of designs. And then there's Ra's al Ghul sculpting a skull. Yeah, we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, as I said, this goes through the different artists. And I'm not going to show them all off. Uh, but it opens, you know, the first opening pages is with Jim Apero um, artwork. And basically, it's all about how basically Gotham has gone, and the world has started to go to hell. Batman is dead right off the bat, and Ra's al Ghul is still immortal. He's still in charge, basically. As um, he soon makes makes up with his men and everything. As um, 
basically they start explaining and explaining about how things are going right now and how there's a disease also going around that's driving people mad and basically they need a vaccine but they wouldn't decide who will get the vaccine and then they decide to make their way to Gotham because um yeah basically and even say this um on yeah the, the vaccine is of course in the back cave so they go there and yep it's completely empty then and as they're looking around for it okay my diary really does Bruce has a diary <laughs> but he then finds those bat designs and it more sums it up like too weird close possible good but too much cave too evil demonic not dark enough, etc., etc. Too gimmicky. <laughs> but, um... Then we get to the one we would get. Return to Darkness. And also you have Will Do for now. And, um... Yeah, but... And then he ba and basically Rage decides he knows exactly what he's going to do. As he gathers some of the best assassins from all over the world to become the Batman. So we can try and basically t take the Brotherhood of the Demon, but instead make it the Brotherhood of the Bat. Trying to besmirch and sully Batman's legacy as these assassins would go around killing criminals brutally. And as they're all working together as a team, just taking run out, trying to bring Raish's version of justice. As we then cut to this young man working out. We have no idea who he is at first. But we see this old, his mother, this old woman is there with him. And um, his name is um, Talent, T-A-L-L-A-N-T. And basically she's been raising him, having him, helping him train and everything. And basically um, it, um, they even point out how the city's gone to another phase. First the rebellion, then the plague and anarchy, followed by gangs and takeover by the so-called city commander. And now this. And basically they feel like something big is going on. And. And. Of course, but even points out how. About these Batman. Talon basically says. Surely. Uh, but the new leader of these new Batman. Surely he's a force for good. To which Shia said. Good. No. Sorry. <laughs> Hope you guys missed that. But the woman said. His mother says. Good for whom. Then basically just explains and saying. Then these new Batman, my son, they fascinate you. And basically, on, you know, on all my life, mother, you, um, all my life, mother, you've said I must train and study and prepare myself for something profound, for a great and noble cause, as you call it. But you've never said what that cause is or when I will embark. Because, my son, the details of your destiny were not mine to know, only that you, your cause must and will be great. And perhaps it is. This is it, Mother. Perhaps you're not convinced. I am divided. Then we see this. An image of a demon and a bat. And... Yeah, basically he finally tells him who his father is. It's Bruce Wayne. And... Okay, I know I screwed up. And I spoiled it already, but as obvious, that's Talia. This is not Damien. This is more, I think, playing off of um, Morrison, not Morrison, um, Mike W. Barr's Son of the Demon, but basically, yeah, Bruce is completely dead, and we then see um, uh, Talon make his way into the manor, and he finds Alfred's Diary, or as he puts it, sorry about the dogs, hopefully my, the music will drown it out, but he's reading through the journal, journal, not diary, of, and of um, Alfred, and Anyway, and all the while then we see this woman, it's Oracle, who's able to basically detect someone's in the back cave. As um they say, State your identity and business. My mother calls me Talent, but I am the son of the one true Batman. And his best friend was James Gordon. If he's still alive, I would the door is let open as there's James Gordon. He's also in a chair and in a chair now and holding a gun at town. Basically, they talk about Batman and how he doesn't believe who he is and um you know basically he's gonna get all worked up about these Batman he says 
And another thing, the real Batman, by the way, never killed. Refused to kill. And with damn good reason. And basically, when Talon points out, but aren't these new Batman stopping crime? He then, of course, puts, um, I love how Graham puts it. Maybe on the surface, but Mussolini made the trains run on time, too. And mark my word, when the new and better Gotham is fully realized, certain elements won't be welcome. And those elements could include you, me and you. Just give me a moment. I'm back, sorry about that. But anyway, basically, yeah, explains how, um, the police, oh, how the GCPD, by the time everything went to hell, was something to be proud of. But then a lot, you know, they soon became just like another gang. And basically everything just really went to hell. And then he even asked, if you're really his son, and why in God's name aren't you doing something about it? So, he decides to make his way there using some of the GCPD people who are that side of the city to make their way to a location and is able to pick up his own mantle and, you know, his own costume. As now in the Batman costume, Talon is making his way inside to deal with his grandfather who has the vaccine. And as the scientists have perfected, then we, um, um, we see him uh, walk right up and basically say, I will join your ranks and serve your vision. Of course, Rage is not stupid. And then asks who he is. And he says, I am called Town. And I, and that I have learned of this cave is proof that I am worthy. So what does Rage do? He puts on a demonic Batman costume. Well, he's the head of the demon, makes sense. Is basically leads to the two fighting, putting up a very brave effort, but Rache is too experienced, and we already know how much of a tough ba uh, fight he was against um, with Bruce, and Talon is nowhere near as trained as Bruce. So, he, Rache wins, but he leaves him. In defeat, you're nevertheless accepted in the Brotherhood of the Bat. But lasting 23 seconds, you have acquitted yourself well. To which, um, even Talon says, I will do better. So, yeah, he... Talon is still allowed in, and, um, and, um, basically, yeah, they have no idea who he is, but he's, of course, joining the ranks, as they're basically being told, um, what to do. They're trying to find something. We don't know what, but then we see, like, one of the old Batmobiles, but then Talon takes one of the guys out, and, um, and then, but everyone else drives off again, and they're all Batmobiles. Even the 60s what? <laughs> and um, basically Talon says, one down, nine to go. And he's starting to take them all out one at a time. As he then takes fights on this one, takes him out. Um, right as one, um, um, but unfortunately, he's too late to save a gang member that's being strangled. But then he then takes down, um, um, takes down, you know, now there's eight left, plus the, de the devil. And, um, they didn't say, uh, and Rage doesn't seem to find that much different as he sends them back out again. And then, uh, but he knows something's up, obviously. As he's talking, as, um, Tal uh, Talon is uh, t fighting off another one. And, yeah, basically, he's like, yeah, uh, it's obvious. New one comes in, the other ones are going, dropping like flies. He sends another one out as Talon is just mopping the floor with the other ones. As, um, again, they continue on fighting until there's only, now, um, there's four down, meaning six left. And, um, and then he, t and he swaps costumes out. Which then, um, um, they can go down to a different area as... The former GC uh, police headquarters, where there's now um, yeah, whoever's in charge of that area is there. As the Batman all show up, but then he conks two of them out, knocking them out cold, and even tells they got um, keep him in your prison and prepare to see four others and more in the nights to follow. As now it's basically down. Um, there's now four more left. As Brace, of course, is just you know wondering like. More than half the ranks are depleted, and the traitor is still among them. And basically, Rache is like, we're not, and everyone, they're going to take them all, I mean, fight them. And eventually, yeah, he takes them all out, right down to, you know, three more are down. Um, and then with the, and you have the damaged bat signal as well. Soon, we see this news anchor who's talking about saying, 
um, ARD city commanders imposed a shoot on sight curfew, but then the other two Batman show up again, trying to make a case for, um, you know, and for the butter or the bat, trying to say we're in control now. But then Talon takes them out as well, leaving. You know, then it just cuts right to him, ready to fight with um, Rage, with a sword to sword. As they just continue fighting it off, Rage just taunting him, giving the usual spiel about why his way is the best way, and all and everything like that. And then making it very clear that um, and that it was basically well, he was the one that killed it had that killed Batman, and put his head on a spike in front of the manor to make a point because this was after Talia and um, had given birth to talent and talent and basically had left and then we see that Talia is there pointing a gun right at race and this is the first time he realizes that this is his son I mean his grandson and that leaves him wide open for talent to stab him and he falls into a Lazarus pit then and, and of course because it happens he comes right back up and Talia tosses Talon the gun, but he's like, no, my father would never use a gun. Drops it. The madness passes pretty quickly for a race, as he then decides, um, you've destroyed my brotherhood the bat, but recreating it would only bore me. So I give you Gossam as my first and last gift, and see how it fares in your hands as the virus runs its course. See who was right, the detective or the demon, your father or your grandfather. And basically then we see that, yeah, he's come up with the cure on his own. He's ever much a detective like his father. And then he says the first thing they gotta do is, is bury the pit. Ending the story. And it's not that bad of a gun in one, just for what it's worth. I mean, it does leave some things like Rache is still out there. He headed right out and leaves the plane, you know, open, obviously. And But Talent is an interesting character. I kind of skimmed through it, but... He basically, he's trying to be his father, and Doug Moon does give him depth. And I mean, even though we're just jumping into his adulthood, and we don't understand much about his childhood, but at the same time, you feel like, okay, he's actually earned his spot, because he does what his father does, would have, infiltrate and take them from within. Be right back one more time. Sorry, hopefully that's the last one. But now, with their loose ends, like the virus is still out there. I mean, Talon just created the cure at the end. And Rage is still out there. And, um, Talon, and we then lead into the two-part League of Batman. As we basically reveal that, and go into more detail, it was 53 years ago that the apocalypse, the virus, was started by Rage. And then basically, um, by this point, there's only 87% of the humanity that has fallen. Uh, sorry, there was 87, so that means there's 13% left. So, which is something that Rage would do. And basically, you know, basically, you know, the artwork in this one is entirely by Mark Bright. No spreading out, and he does a great job here. As we find out that, um, um, basically, Talent has restarted the League of the Batman, but it's kind of come well before Morrison did his own little Batman Incorporated. Goes all around the globe, although in this case, they're helping to protect and spread out the cure. Different Batman go to different major cities and um, and around the country, around the world, as they're basically giving a deal to end the demons plague. And then we find out how Barbara is still an old lady, but still Oracle is helping out in the Batcave, helping everyone out. As Talent is also, and a Talent Talia is still there, basically in a way being his mother, but also a little bit of his Alfred as, um, uh. But yeah, but basically, Town admits there was so, and he was only going to keep it the one true Batman. But then he realized it's too much. He needs more. He's only one guy. Is um, basically, yeah. You know, he then decides after rereading through Alfred's journal, what? Not your father's diary? That he's going to keep on recruiting others, kind of like what Bruce had used to have. And uh, but of course, Talia points out the others are dead. So, but then they also realize. Yeah, well, we I, I gotta just go and get other ones, and so he decides to, um, again use his father, and this is what basically makes him make the decision to use his father's agent to spread it around because even if they can spread the cure out, it's they can't do it unless they do it at multiple points. It's not gonna spread fast enough. 
We didn't see, um, um, on. But yeah, he then swings down and meets up with a gang who are a bunch of ruffians, one of them named Ray's. Is, you know, he's making a deal, basically. Like, we're already going to hell. We can either just keep fighting it or you guys can help me. And Ray decides to join up with them, but the rest of his gang isn't happy. So it leads into a fight as they all fight him down. But I love this. Brace yourselves. I think they mean it. Brace your own self. I know they do. And they take them all out. And it's like, Ray's is it? Was. When I still had a gang. And before I ran into you, you have a new gang. And you wear new colors. Dark ones. <laughs> And we see Talia then reminiscing about Bruce as Talia returns home with their new recruit. As we also then see that um, in Mexico, Raish has been able to change the Lazarus Pit, altering it to try and uh, to make himself immortal without having to constantly go through it again and again. And basically, they, you know, going to Egypt, they've been able to also gather up all technology they've been developing, very advanced technology. And basically, this is where Raish plans on Continuing on, as this is all an artificial Lazarus, but I should point out. And when he does it, he ends up coming very reptilian like. It's weird. But, yeah, it's just, again, very, very weird as he then starts to, um, um, hold on. Oh, yeah. But the way that this newer artificial laser pit is done, it's made him much stronger. As he then fights down all of the assassin drones that were meant to test him. And, yeah, basically they, um, he destroys them all. And, yeah, basically that, and he's now deciding with his new, um, his new mindset and everything, that they're going to now replace everything with cybernetics. And because he realizes flesh is weak and there's only so much out there. So he basically saying, of course, the vision is mine, all mine. And as the world savior, I must shape and control that vision. I must use metal to rule the new Eden on Earth, damning the ceaseless sea of humanity once and for all. Basically, this is showing that if Ray tried to gain what he want, it wouldn't be enough. He would want more and more to try and think of it. And yeah. So, um, um, uh, but basically, Raish, obviously, at this point, the new process made his memory a little faulty, as he has been reminded of everything, and points out how, yeah, for the most part, the, vi the demon plague has basically been rescinded. We then see then he, um, he has a scientist activate a cryo chamber, with a particular figure inside that we don't see yet. We then see the droids are being sent out, and dealing with each of the um um the other uh, the other Batman and he actually kills um two of them in Moscow. Basically, they're trying to stop him before they finish sp um, spreading the rest of the cure. And then in London, we see another one of them is is fighting him off Batman Five, and but but he's scr it's all scrambled as um we then see someone else is wearing the demonic Batman outfit. I can tell you right now, it's not Raish, but then one of the other, um, but then with back with, um, in Gotham, we see that, um, um Ray's and Talent are there, and Ray's gets stabbed. Wow, short tenure. Eh, he ain't dead. But, um, but Talent is able to help him up as he sees, yeah, he, he thinks that's Raish, but it's not. As they, he and this new demonic Batman fight. But this new demonic Batman is way too good as he tosses him aside. And, um, um, basically even things like, my, I must do what my father says. Father, you're the demon's son. I am his creation. I am his servant. And he just keeps them fighting him and just keeps taunting him. Then he removes his mask and reveals that talent is just like, you, but, but, as we're, of course, he's interrupted as, um, this new demonic Batman continues to fight him as he's ready to, um, um, he's ready to kill him when his hovercraft is being attacked by a bunch of looters as he goes in and fights them off. And, yeah, well, it looks like Raze is definitely dead, I should point out. Yeah, that sucks. But we didn't see Talon is able to get himself up 
and make his way, um, you know, trying to make his way back to the cave. But when he does, but when the demonic Batman shows up, there's Talia all alone up above with a gun. But he basically, uh, the demonic Batman throws a batarang as. He then, we then find out it's Bruce, but it's a clone. Very much so. I mean, given how young he is, as he's then speaking to Talia. But it's quite clear that it's not. He doesn't have any feelings. He doesn't have any memories of anything. He's just been programmed to believe something else. You know that he's the creation of Raish. That he must do what Raish wants of him. And basically, that's when we see about what happened with Bruce. His head right on there. While Talia had uh, talent. And yeah, it that's just pretty disappointing. But then, yeah, of course, he, um, Bruce is like to believe still that Raish's way will bring a better world. As Talia just keeps on telling him, no, that's not the man that I love. And basically even calls him out that he's um, being programmed for genocide. They keep on talking and talking and talking until... Um, if, until finally he puts the mask back on. Note this for him later on. And he stabs Talia. But, uh, and then um, Or goes down below but has no idea what's been going up above as Talon runs up and finds his mother dead. As basically, we end this first part with Bruce standing over and Talon, his son and taunting him. Um, her last sight, as commanded by Lord Al Ghul, who was meant to be my living face, smiling over your dead flesh. And, but he basically admits, I did it out of sequence. Then, but here's the thing though, we open up and, okay, at first I was going to complain, but then I realized, oh, he just unmasked right then and there. As he's now back to taunting him again, as Talon just swings a punch, Bruce, he doesn't even flinch as he just takes him out and leaves him there. But because of his talkings with Talia, it's already causing him to feel a little bit of doubt. He's like, wait, uh, uh. As we then see, um, uh, they're going through the cave, in the cave as they find something. A weird stalagmite as he pulls on it. It's a camouflage lever and it opens up a new, a, a different area of the cave. A dedication as we then see Bruce's skull the only remains that they have of him. And that's when they realize Rache clones my father. That's how they were able to put that together. And basically, and as it's going on, Rache is just going to keep on taking steps necessary to try and get what he wants. To try and, um, um, yeah, basically try and get what he wants. Try and keep on bringing up the demise of humanity and make it in his vision. Then we see that Talon has one of the robotic heads with him as he plans on using that. As, um, yeah, it was one of the cyborgs that was attached to, um, th uh, that was attached to it. This was one of the, in Batman 5 that was still out there. And they realized they could actually use it. As then Talon brings Talia and puts it next to, well, his father's skull to be the closest to her beloved. As Barbara is starting to help with, Tal with Batman 5 to figure things out. And once they are able to do it, they're able to hack into one of the other drones and get a voice synthesizer. And, you know, through it, it's able to ask and figure out where to go. And it's, it's in Mexico. So, last time, I promise. Sorry about that. Um, and basically, we see that Bruce has returned and keeps on trying to show his doubts as um, Rage is trying to get him back in control. We then see Talon utilizing the skull and using it as a weapon. Then we see some of the other League of Batman and some women, believe it or not, as they're ready to go in for one final battle against um, Raish. As we're then seeing Bruce fighting off some of the drones. A lot of his muscle memory is further and further coming back. As he asks the scientist, who am I? And the scientist, he decides to take him to actually find out about who the detective is. Why would this guy do that? You know, it's just, yeah. Why would he reveal that when this is going to spell, ruin everything? He then basically, we get a summary of everything. What's going on, the usual stuff. And basically once he finds out, it's made clear he's a clone. 
He snaps and smashes the screen. Is he having an existential crisis? We didn't see all the Batman and women jumping out, going in for the attacks as one of them gets stuck, of course. As the ship gets shot down, they're all going in for a fight and everything, and um, Rachel, you know, gives the word to send out all their attacks. Then all the drone cyborgs come in, they all fight them off, putting up a brave, a brave effort. And they're doing a pretty bang out and bang up job and this time around because they know what they're dealing with. We then see um um uh, <coughs> um basically we find out okay actually here's the reason why the uh, the scientist is realizing that race has become mad. So he revealed about and Bruce was to him so he'd be able to snap out of it and come in and because only Batman Bruce can truly defeat race as talent makes his way up taunting for a race for one final confrontation as they um uh, and as they fight but then one of the cyborgs is able to hit pound in the head not enough to kill him but enough to leave him an opening as he starts to as race starts to win but then bruce shows up as they start to fight again just continuing on as uh, on and on as um as they realize then you know the scientists were brought re 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 Reveals to them he must not activate the Lazarus pit. He will poison the world again. As they start to make their way there, and you know, make their way down there, and basically Bruce de uh, devastates the machine and continues to fight Raish until finally, um, as every everything's starting to collapse, ev uh, uh, everything's starting to collapse. Bruce then um, grabs onto Raish and. Um, yeah, basically they are then both and uh, wipe down the explosion. As um, yeah, basically the irony that he uh, he was brought about and destroyed by his own creation by human flesh. As what? Sorry, that time was because my phone ran out of space. But we ended up with basically the and talent is um. Is basically ready to say we must still continue on the League of Batman. If you're willing, you must help me. As they're all like, Aah! and then he basically provides to um, the scientists the blood. Moon Sun, um, sa uh, Moon Sun, sacrifice at Gotham. Each and every cell containing a complete genetic blueprint of the demon's daughter, my mother, and soon his daughter. Wait, is that always going to clone his own mother and raise him like his daughter? That's how about an Oedipus complex there? But that's the end of it, and that's the end of all of these. And for the most part, it feels like Doug Monk really stretched it out more so. Because a lot of stuff is just Rish pontificating, talking, and just going on and on and on about everything. It's like, okay, get to the point. I mean, the concepts in this are all good. The execution is for the most part good. It just felt like it was just overly done but the fact is it does show us not only that gives us a league of the batman but it's what the what if is basically what if race won what if race won and what if bruce got together with talia and yeah and the basically the whole notion of the costumes was a nice thing to kick it off but the story yeah it's basically what if race and for the most part start gain nearly complete victory and defeat a batman what if someone went and was there to stop him? Basically, that's what it asks, and it answers, and it's... It makes a lot of sense that Rach would go that far, where it's not enough. That eventually he would get to the point of wanting to wipe out all of humanity's flesh and replace it with robotics, because that's the only way for him to control it. And, again, so many ideas are good, just the execution is all wonky near the end. But, that's the Brotherhood of the Bat. And I still really like it. I thought the first one, again, with all the different artists was very good. And, yeah. Nothing much else to say. Tomorrow I'll be back here again with Batman Thrill Killer. So, and by Howard Chaikin, and I'm forgetting on the artist, but it's set in the, in, in the 60s. So let's see how that turns out. We focus on not Batman being the first Cape Crusader, but Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. With Robin at her side. Then Batman later on. Let's see how that turns out. Uh, so, catch you all later.